And good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Ask Dr. MJ Facebook Live and Instagram Live presentation. We are here at Atlanta West Primary Care, and we're here to answer your healthcare questions. We want to thank you for joining us this evening because we know that you have options and lots of other things that you could be doing. But we want to give you lots of great medical information about your health, your wealth, because your health is your wealth. Why? Because your health is important. So welcome to the show right now. We want to thank you live. And I, and I started the show off here. Showing you Dr. Carrier back in mass. And the reason why back in mass, because of COVID is out there, but not just the COVID, the flu and the respiratory syncytial virus, the RSV. You have been inundated recently with ads uh, promoting the RSV vaccine. And if you're not necessarily getting it for you, it traditionally affects young children under age two and older individuals older than 60, uh, preferably 65 or higher. But that's good. Prime grandparent age. And so I was sensitized to this because my grandson is uh, just caught an RSV infection and uh, he is uh, catching it right now. So it is really, uh, you know, got him knocked down and out. And uh, so his mother's down and out because he's coughing, wheezing and doing all of those things that you do when you get a respiratory tract infection. And there's, you know, there's treatment options for it. Uh, uh, there are bronchodilators like albuterol. There's also cough suppressants, but natural stuff like honey. But the main thing is just getting through it. But that's a long period to get through. An RSV infection can last 10 to 14 days. That's two weeks, basically. And nobody that, that, that does anything, including take care of children, can do so for two weeks. And it's 24-7 nonstop care of a sick. It's hard enough for a well child. So for a sick baby, it is really a problem. And then... I have had patients coming in now testing positive for the COVID. And so uh, they'll come in with symptoms saying, I think I might have COVID. I want to get tested, but they're not wearing masks. So now I'm going back to a strict mask policy in my office. And so you will see that Dr. Kaya will be wearing his mask. And again, this is a K95 mask. This is a mask that filters out 95% of viral particles, not the, the, the flimsy uh, paper mask. Uh, that you can see or even the, the cute cloth masks that people use that are decorative, but not really good uh, at all for protecting you from infection. They may have your fraternity, sorority, your social club, uh, where you from, your neighborhood, uh, this group, that group. Uh, you got them at a golf tournament. You got them in a variety of different places. But those are rarely effective in giving you the protection that you need. So I'm recommending now that you go to the stores, the Sam's, the Costco's, the Walmart's, the Amazon's. And order these K95 masks before they become in short supply because they're going to become in short supply and you'll have difficulty getting them when you most need them. So I would stock up now. Also, the government has opened up the free uh, COVID testing again. At one point, they had cut that off, but now you're eligible to obtain up to four COVID tests for free at your home. Just go to uh, COVID.gov. Or just Google how to get free uh, COVID tests, and then it'll direct you, and then you'll get them in the mail in very short order. And don't waste test testing everything and everybody. Uh, use them as if they are gold and magic because they are gold and magical. Uh, everybody's looking for testing now, and testing is becoming in short supply as well. And if you get a traditional test, and I have to send it out to a lab, it's going to take anywhere from 24 to 72 hours to get the results back. And whereas a rapid test, you get it. If that rapid test is positive, then you have it. You don't have to repeat it. You don't have to test over and over. Uh, be sensible and test maybe close contact spouses, somebody you've really been around. Don't test everybody who you've spent two seconds with that day, particularly if they're not having symptoms uh, because you can waste the test. Uh, so, But if you test positive and then anybody that's, that's contacted you or been around you needs to take precautions, um, and, even if they aren't having symptoms because they don't want to develop symptoms or they don't want to become casual and end up catching them. So what is Dr. Kaya doing? I'm masking up. I told you that. I'm also taking my vitamin D, the lipo, the doctor's D, at 5,000 international units per day. Uh, the ultimate product, 5,000 international units per day of the doctor's D. 
gives you the immuno boost and protection that you need. It makes your body an unfavorable environment for infectious pathogens. So viruses like the flu and the coronavirus and the RSV, uh, even the shingles virus that everybody's talking about, uh, or bacteria like strep and mono and uh, uh, things that can cause uh, pneumonia or strep throat, uh, fungal infections that can cause infections of your toenails and fingernails or for women, vaginal yeast, for men, jock itch. So your body becomes an unfavorable environment for infectious pathogens. Doesn't mean you won't ever catch anything. It just means that if you do, it'll be mild and self-limiting. But more importantly, you got a good barrier, a good wall that it has to get through and get over before it can attack you and infect your body. So your vitamin D and then the lipoimmune product, the lipoimmune, which has multiple things in it. It's got zinc, it's got elderberry extract, it's got vitamin C. Those are supplements that will boost your immune system, give you the protection that you need, or even if you do get sick, help you fight through that. Both of these are available at our website, lipodrops.com. And if you go to the website, please join our family, LipoCares. We want to be able to contact you. There's special information that's available, special offers for those individuals, several things that you can do. We want to make sure that you have no problems uh, in, in contacting us and getting through. And there are major benefits to being a, a family member. So when you go to lipodrops.com, there are various ways that you can join our lipo family. Why? Because lipo cares. Okay, Holly, let's go through roll call and see who we got listening to us tonight. Okay, Lidra Carter. I am from Lidra from Virginia. Okay, how you doing, Lidra? Thank you so much. This may be your first time. Lolita, Lolita. Hello, Lolita. Where are you from? Hi, Miss Bakima Bowling. So good to hear from you once again. We really appreciate you showing up. Sherry Gamble, good evening from Dallas. Hi, Sherry. Thank you. Texas is in the house. Sean, big time green. My name, the first male participant that we had. And one is very vocal, and he is a ride or die go to. Sean is always on the show. Thank you, Sean. We appreciate you. Carolyn Brown from Michigan. Thank you, Carolyn. Great picture of you. Okay. Rachel Harrison from New Orleans. New Orleans in the house. Rachel, New Orleans is why God made Tupperware. Send me some, some Creole food. Good evening, Dr. Kyrie. Chili wheel. All right. Glad to see you in the house, my friend. Carlos Ward. Okay. From Douglasville, Georgia. All right. Carlos. Deborah Mathis. Good evening, Dr. C. Thank you, Deborah, for tuning in with us this evening. C.L. Turner from Baton Rouge. C.L., you also in the home of good spicy seafood. We want some. Sheila Owens Pete. Good evening from Tulsa, Oklahoma. All right. Tulsa's in the house. Now we're moving out west. Rosemary. Good evening, all from Pittsburgh. Hi, Moses Marie. Thank you so much for tuning in as well. Chris Goodjoy. Chris from South Carolina is in the house. All right, Chris. Thank you so much. I love that picture. Sabrina Washington from St. Louis. Mo. Hi, Sabrina. How are you, St. Louis? Deborah Vicker. Victor. All right. Deborah. 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 I'm going to say it right. Keith Keith from Jacksonville, Florida. All right, Keith. Thank you so much for joining us. Mimi Witcher. Oh, Mimi from Tampa. Thank you so much. Mimi is a good friend, and she runs a foundation that focuses on childhood obesity, and we are so glad that we have partnered with her. Shamia Sally, hello from Delaware. Hi, Shamia. How are you? Derek Griffin, A5, okay, 06, from Chicago, Illinois. How did you know? All right, Derek, appreciate you. Crafty Cover, good evening, Macon, Georgia. All right, Macon's in the house. Okay, Lolita, Lolita from Baltimore. Thank you, Lolita. We appreciate you letting us know. Pam Peoples from Taney Town, Maryland. Okay. Leroy Murray from Tampa, Florida. Hello, Leroy. We're coming down to uh, Miramar, and we're going uh, – Tampa, no, Tampa's not close, actually. Uh, it's Miami or Fort Lauderdale. I'm uh, flying into Fort Lauderdale, and I'll be in Miramar to speak this weekend uh, at the mayor's conference. Uh, mayor Wayne Messam, who is the first African-American mayor in Miramar, and he's invited me to come down. Sharon Rutledge from Derricott from Lawton, Oklahoma. Okay. All right. Tamika Armstrong from Albany, Georgia. Hi, Mika. How you doing, darling? Horace Buster Ryan Riches. All right, Horace Buster. I love that. From Clayton, North Carolina. Okay, so let's get with the show. Remember, this is the people show. You ask your healthcare questions, and we'll try to answer and share those with you. So, Dr. Guy has got it. I've been talking all day. I got a dry throat, so I got to take a time to sip. And this is ice cold water, not vodka. Should be vodka, however. Thank you so very much. Okay. 
So we have to take a break to do that every once in a while. It's because I don't want my voice to crack. Don't want my voice to choke. So we are good. Let's go with those questions. Winnie King, when you're bone on bone taking collagen, would that help the problem? What type? Okay. Uh, there are various types of collagen uh, production, but collagen works with existing uh, uh, cartilage. If you don't have any real cartilage, there is nothing to repair. And so bone on bone is like late stage degenerative bone disease. That's where, again, every every joint of your body has a cushion. That cushion is like you put your two knuckles together and you had a balloon between your two knuckles and it wraps around both hands. Imagine that, if you will, so that the bones don't rub on each other, creating friction and deterioration of the joint. The purpose of that, that balloon is also filled with a, a liquid fluid that's like oil in a gas engine or STP is very slippery called synovial fluid. And that fluid can become infected and inflamed, giving you a synovitis. But for most people, when everything is working wonderfully, it does that. So collagen probably won't help. You might benefit from uh, there are artificial cushions that can be injected. One of the name brands is called Simbist, but there are at least three different brands out there. Uh, usually takes at least three injections. Those will basically give you uh, replace the cartilage. They don't repair it. They replace it. So where you have no cushion, you will have cushion. Uh, all, all joints are not available uh, for that. It just depends on the status of your disease state and whether you have uh, just inflammation and no infection in that area. And also, you got to get all three injections. You just get one. It's going to make you feel better. You're going to be like, wow, I don't need to go back and get the others. You do for you to have any longevity with that because it builds on itself. And as you separate the joint, you get another injection that separates more, you get another injection that separates more. So when you put your weight on that, it pushes down, but you never get bone on bone contact. There's still a differentiating space between those two joints. Great question, Winnie. Wayne Dunstan, can I talk about terbinafine? Terbinafine is an antifungal tablet that is God's gift to the funky fingernail. But it also can be used to treat virtually any fungal infection of the body, including the scalp. That's called uh, tinea capitis. Anywhere in the body is called tinea corporis, except in the inner upper thighs and between the butt cheeks. That's called tinea curis, C-U-R-I-S. The key phrase in that is tinea. And the way that the terbinafine works is it blocks the, uh, uh, the cell wall of the fungus from replicating. And so the cells ultimately lice and die and they don't grow. Now, what I want to make clear about particularly a fungal nail infection, no medication, including all the stuff that you see advertised to paint on a fungal nail or to soak your feet in or whatever. Once a, a nail is fungoid, it is fungoid. You cannot convert a fungoid nail back to a normal nail. But what some treatments can do is kill the fungus, allow and stop further growth of the fungus so that as normal nail starts to grow out, there's a transition. Terbinafine does exactly that. Nails grow from the base here, not from the tips, and they grow. And it can be one millimeter a month. It can be four or five millimeters a month, depending upon how fast your nails grow. So we're going to start here in the nail bed. And then as it starts to grow, when you've been on to benefit, it's going to move up. And then you're going to have normal nail, half normal, half fungal. Until it ultimately grows out and you have full nail. That could be the toes or the fingers, uh, particularly with a lot of ladies getting the uh, gel coverings on the nails that predisposes them to a fungal infection and so what they do they keep putting more gel on top of a, a, a icky fungal nail and so they need to treat that uh and set up once you've taken that medication for a period of time it sets up an antifungal barrier that will stay under your skin for an extended period of time preventing you from getting reinfected but eventually that will wear off and if you are susceptible to a fungal infection the fungus is grow where it's warm and wet so if you keep your hands wet, if you're working in the field and you're washing dishes or something that keeps your hand wet all the time, uh, any type of thing that allows your hands to get wet, or even if you're putting your hands in gloves that make your hands sweat, uh, that's why you get toenail fungus because your feet are in shoes, your shoes get wet from sweat, and the fungus grows. And so that is the issue. So you need to keep those areas dry and clean. There we go. Great question. Derek Griffin, I've been diagnosed with CKD stage 3. And I said once on the RSM, you use the same remedy as diabetes herb vitamins. Uh, Derek, yes, you can. There are uh, CKD3. There are several things that you can do for that now. There are uh, a couple of medications, but the uh, SG, no, I'm sorry, the GLP-1 medications 
Uh, those are the Ozempics, the uh, Manjaros, and the Wegovies, and the SGLT2 inhibitors. That's Giants, Farsiga, uh, uh, Staglatro. Those medications have a secondary benefit that benefits kidney disease. It allows your kidneys to heal. Your kidneys have a unique ability to heal and repair themselves, and your liver does the same thing. It can generate new normal tissue. No other organ in your body can do that as of yet. Those two inherently can do that. That's why a person can donate two-thirds of their liver and leave one lobe, and the other lobe grows back out over time. You have a full-size uh, normal liver. Uh, but the kidneys can regenerate as well. After a certain point, you got too much damage, and they're beyond repair. But those medications can help. Uh, you know, in doing so, there's another uh, medication called uh, uh, Corindia. Corindia is a great medication. It comes in 10 milligram and 20 milligram tablets. It is a uh, uh, it, it helps by the pathway of blocking the renin angiotensin uh, aldosterone system or the RAS system, the R A S S system. That system uh, also is responsible for damage to the kidneys by high blood pressure and other mechanisms associated with stress. So those are things that can be done that are not the traditional things. The traditional things with CKD usually due to either uncontrolled high blood pressure or diabetes or both is to treat the primary disease state. So if you're diabetic, control your blood sugar. If you have high blood pressure, control your blood pressure so that you minimize additional damage to the kidneys. But you can have neither of those and still have kidney disease. And so with CKD stage three, you have uh, functioning kidneys and they can be improved upon. So look at those options. But again, uh, just Google the diabetes medications and kidney disease, and uh, it'll give you all of the information that you would like. We'll put some information up on our website as well. So when you go to the website, if you have joined the family, so to speak, and that requires you to give us your email address, then we're going to you're going to have access to a lot of good specific information that will answer those types of questions for you and direct you to resources so that you can get and walk in the door and power with information when you go to see your, your provider. But again, SGLT2 inhibitors, names Jardiance, or Farsiga, or Stiglatro, and uh, GFP1s. That's uh, all of the rage now. O, 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 o Zempic, Wegovi, and Manjaro. All shown to have extraordinary benefits for the kidneys. We don't know why. We don't know what the mechanism of action is. Uh, my personal thought is that because you're controlling the blood sugar, it makes you lose weight. You overall improve your health. You overall decrease the stress on your kidneys. It has the same benefit for the heart. So people that have heart disease that don't have any diabetes are being treated with these medications. People with kidney disease that don't have diabetes are being treated with those medications. But if you also have diabetes and you do have either of those disease states, it's it's just that's now the state of the art as far as treating you is concerned. You should be you should be on one of those medications to treat that disease state. Great question there. Lead your car. I've been diagnosed with thyroid eye disease and I have left eye protrusion. Anything you can recommend to remedy this? Uh, one, control your thyroid disease. Uh, that is usually a caused by hyperactive thyroid. And with hyperactive thyroid, uh, there are several treatments. There's a medication called propothiouracil that blunts the production of thyroid hormone and lowers the levels. Uh, sometimes just using medications like beta blocker class drugs to control the symptoms, including thyroid eye disease. But there has been recently a medication advertised and promoted specifically for thyroid eye disease, the name of which escapes me. But just uh, just Google medications to treat thyroid eye disease uh, beyond just controlling the thyroid. And uh, this specifically targets uh, the mechanism of action and makes your eyes bulge. And uh, you should fortunately it's just the left eye. But most people just both like get you that startled look where you look that way all the time and uh, where you can see. The, the 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 diagnosis is made because you expose the upper corner. You can see the whites of your eyes above the pupils and sometimes below as well. But once you see them above, then you know the, the eyeball is protruding out because that's not normal. Your eyelids should cover that. It should just cover the top of your pupils it, it, unless you're excited to start or you lift your eyebrows like I just did. But when you walk around with that look all the time, then that can be treated and avoided. There are, there's actually a very aggressive surgical technique uh, that's used as well to uh, remove some of the fat behind the eyes. But uh, this medication seems to address it in a separate way. Uh, so something to recommend and consider. So one, make sure the thyroid disease proper 
is being addressed so that it doesn't worsen and then hopefully we'll regress and then also the new medications to treat thyroid eye disease but i've seen it advertised even the acronym ted is now new in medical lexicon that did not exist when i was in training and it has not existed for the majority of my medical practice but uh you know uh, pharmaceutical companies have a great way of coming up with nice little acronyms and things to get you to remember the medicine which is good in this circumstance so follow that up Leandra. uh great question I suffer from skin injection cellulitis again. What's the fastest way to get rid of it? Does it have to be antibiotics or is there a natural treatment? Is this an autoimmune related disease? Uh, it can be autoimmune, but it is an infectious disease process. Itis means inflammation of. Uh, when that happens, uh, it usually means it, it's going to require antibiotics. Some people have to stay on antibiotics like doxycycline continuously. They take For the acute infection, you would take one twice daily, one in the morning, one in the evening. For maintenance and prevention of infection, you take one a day. But you also can, this usually is caused by a bacteria on the skin called Staphylococcus. Guess what? Everybody has Staphylococcus on their skin. Normally, it doesn't bother you. You don't bother it. You live symbiotically. Your skin is one of your largest organs. And it, it is impenetrable to bacteria, viruses, and fungi unless it gets damaged. So if it gets a, a puncture wound, uh, or anything that disrupts the integrity of the skin, then bacteria, funguses, and viruses that normally have no access to get into the skin uh, now are into it versus being on it. Being on it doesn't bother you. Uh, you get it every day, you take a shower, you wash it off, and you kill it. But there are some things you can do to minimize. A good antibacterial soap. I highly recommend Lever 2000, the original formula, silver box with a green stripe, or dial the white bar. They created dial the white bar. The original dial was a yellow bar that floated. Uh, dial is a good antibacterial, but it also has lanolin. Lanolin uh, is made from sheep's wool. Everybody that I know that's a person of color, they get exposed to sheep wool, it itches like crazy. So uh, they created the white dial bar, which uh, is a good antibacterial soap as well. You have to put the soap on your skin. You have to let it stay there long enough to kill the germs. And then so that you don't itch afterwards, you have to rinse it off. Have a very good extended rinse cycle. But I hear people proudly say, oh, I don't wash my face with soap. Uh, you need to uh, wash it with soap uh, to do so. You can also treat topically after doing that, applying an astringent like a witch hazel, which will not dry the skin out like alcohol will. Uh, and that will kill bacteria as well. Uh, be conscientious about uh, wearing, uh, like, say, the same pajamas all the time uh, for multiple days without washing them because you'll change clothes every day, uh, but you'll wear the same pajamas every night for a month. So you want to make sure that you're changing your sleepwear, your laundry, your linen, uh, your bed, and your and your sleep clothes uh, when you're most susceptible because these are things that are, are repeatedly exposed to your skin. And if they get infected, they get bacteria on them then you're re-exposing yourself every time you get back into bed limits. So uh, really dramatic ways. Uh, I tell people to take a bath in Clorox bleach. You fill the tub with warm water. You put four ounces of Clorox in it, which is basically making it a heavily chlorinated swimming pool. And I'm talking about a full tub of water, not just uh, 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 the short amount you might. Eat. Most people like to fill the tub up. So this is a situation where you need to fill the tub up. You put in the four ounces of, of Clorox, stir it up good, get it into the soap. Is, is for all the way your chin up to your neck uh, for 10 minutes or so. Then get up, take a shower using the antibacterial soap. That kills the staphylococcal bacteria. It also kills viruses and funguses that can be on your skin as well. And then it gives you a best chance of avoiding recurrences of the cellulitis. Cellulitis can lead to big abscesses, uh, carbuncles and risings, as grandmama say, uh, particularly in areas like under the arms or in folds of the skin. If you have uh, excess uh, abdominal tissue, uh, a, a done left, then it can, you can get abscesses under that. It can be very unpleasant. Inner upper thighs, etc. Places you don't want to have oozing pussy lesions. Okay, great question. K. Davis, what's the name of the new therapy you're talking about one more? It's for the autoimmune like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. There are biologics. There's uh, multiple classes of drugs now called the biologics uh, uh, that are available now to treat various types of, uh, again, they started off, the first one was just the rheumatoid arthritis. 
Uh, and then after that, next thing you know, they people that had other autoimmune diseases were getting total relief of their symptoms. So now they are directing these medications to uh, uh, treat those disease states and cure them. So they are getting, uh, you know, they are indicating them for those disease states. So there are several brands uh, uh, that you can get. And uh, depending upon uh, what it does and what your disease state is, then uh, you need to partner with either a rheumatologist that knows and understands this class of drug, or even a primary care doctor that knows and understands this class of drug and when to use them. Uh, Dr. Collier uh, is educating himself on it. And it's not something that I feel comfortable initiating therapy with at this time. Uh, but I will continue therapy if I have a patient that's already on this medication that's been described. Uh, even dermatologists are doing this for particularly for uh, rheumatoid arthritis and for plaque psoriasis. And so other skin diseases that are autoimmune in nature uh, are being treated that way. So look for the biologics. That is the broad class of drugs uh, used to treat uh, uh, autoimmune diseases like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. And you'll get a wealth of information. These drugs are selling like hotcakes. One, because there was never anything like them previously. And two, they work. And they work amazingly well. So uh, again, those are treatments, K. Davis, that you want to look at. Great question. Carlos Ward, can you please talk about weight loss after 40? Carlos? Weight loss under 20, weight loss after 40, weight loss 60 or higher. The thing about weight loss is this. When you were young, you could decide, I'm going to a party this week and I want to wear a certain outfit. I want to wear a pair of pants that you can't get in on Monday. You drink an extra glass of water and by Friday you drop five pounds and you're good to go. Well, things change. Your, metabolized, your metabolism and your ability to metabolize fat in particular decreases on a year-to-year -year basis as you age. It becomes more difficult. It becomes easier to gain because your body, you're usually less active and you require less caloric intake, but the opposite happens. We start uh, making more money. We're moving up the ladder. We're now having business meetings and we're having seven-course meals, uh, whereas if we go home, we have a three-course meal and we eat less. But we, we're now going out, we're getting appetizers, we're getting desserts, we're having uh, multiple cocktails that are usually uh, uh, calorie laden uh, that are adding to that. So our activity level is less and our food intake and caloric intake is higher. But our ability to metabolize fat and keep it off is, is altered inextricably. So that's why the, the original method of weight loss was just to restrict calories. And guess what? Calorie restriction diets work. There are 13 different strip mall diets, and they all work. If you do what they tell you to do, exactly the way they tell you to do it, quick weight loss, Jenny Craig, I'm too fat, weight be gone, you name it. They have methodologies to get the weight off of you. The problem is, if you revert back to your usual and customary eating habits, you gain the weight back. So that is why the entire basis of the life line is not to alter your caloric intake substantively or significantly. The objective is to alter your metabolism so you will change the way your body metabolizes fat so you do metabolize fat and not store calories as fat and so you lose weight and the objective is that once you there's no stopping so to speak once your metabolism been altered it's a matter of keeping it that way so that you keep the weight off so there's a maintenance phase where you may or may not continue to use products like the lipo drops maximum strength formula which does a couple of things it decreases your appetite but it also alters the way that your body metabolizes fat. So you lose fat from places you cannot traditionally exercise it away from, like under your chin, like the back of your arms, like across your back in the bra area, ladies, out of thighs and inner thighs uh, for men and women. Uh, areas you, again, you cannot focus, you cannot target. You can't target weight loss. You can do literally a thousand crunches a day and you will have a six pack underneath six to eight inches of fat because you haven't done anything to remove the fat layer. So uh, also your metabolism, our, our catchphrase for the lipo drops is lose the muffin top with lipo drops because you will lose that type of fat cell by altering your metabolism. And where do you lose the fat from? Where the fat is. If that's where the fat is, that's where you're going to lose it from. So great question, Carlos. Chili wheel. I take Ozempic. What can I take for feeling sick on the stomach? 
Chili Weird, you're going to be slim, sexy. You're going to be high school sexy in no time flat. Ozempic is a great product. Uh, again, it's, it's primary indication is for the treatment of diabetes. It lowers and controls your blood sugar and lowers your hemoglobin A1C. All great things, but it has been shown in, in uh, studies to make you lose weight up to, up to 30 pounds for every 100 pounds. That is the equivalent of a gastric bypass. A surgical procedure so they're calling this the non-surgical gastric bypass the problem is it, it works by two mechanisms it decreases your appetite one and two it delays gastric emptying so you're not hungry and then whatever you do eat sits in your stomach longer so you have a feeling of satiety or that you feel full the problem with that is your stomach is trying to digest food so it's kicking out excess acid that excess acid is what gives you the nausea feeling. So you have to have something on your stomach to help with that. I have found that uh, basic yogurt, uh, Greek style in particular with extra probiotics is a wonderful way to avoid that symptom. Uh, there are other things that might do it, something that kind of coats the stomach and protects it. If you're not, if you don't care for yogurt or if you can't tolerate it, but the vast majority of us can, and the advice that Dr. Kaya gives is for regular people, not people with special, I can't do this and I can't do that. But if you can eat the yogurt, yogurt is excellent. It may require a couple of cups a day. Uh, so get ready to stock your refrigerator up. Publix and Kroger always have 10 for 10 on their yogurts. And so I load up my refrigerator to make sure that we are ready uh, for that. But it does take up a substantial amount of refrigerator space. So I mean, you're going to have to shop for it regularly until you uh, learn to tolerate that. That will improve over time. It does, because one, you're eating less until your stomach realizes this, so it stops making as much acid. But there is an adjustment period, particularly in, in the initial phases, and that can cause nausea uh, up to the point of vomiting. It can cause the excess acid. It can cause uh, that alternating constipation and diarrhea. Exactly what that mechanism actually is. We're not sure for some people it's more one than the other, but for the average person taking one of these drugs, and that's the Ozempic and the Manjaro. They will have constipation for a period, then they have diarrhea for a period. But what they all will do is lose weight in a dramatic fashion. So these medications are amazing in doing so. Great question, Chili Wheel. Tawana Wright, what would you recommend for digestive issues? Bloating, feelings of nausea, fatigue, brain fog, tightness of the abdominal area occasionally. Tawana, you need to decompress that abdomen. We have the Belly Fix product line. The Belly Fix will include our lipobiotics and our lipocleanse. Uh, the lipocleanse product is not a laxative, but it is a cleanse and a detox. What it does is allow you to have large, easy to pass bowel movements that removes these things from your colon and your intestines. Your GI tract is one long space. Your mouth, your esophagus, your stomach, your small intestines, your large intestines, your sigmoid colon, your rectum. The name changes to protect the innocent, but it's literally one long space. The problem is if you get any backup, if you get any obstruction and anywhere along that line, everything starts to back up. If what you eat in that excess stomach acid cannot move down, it sits there and moves. It will move up eventually, but it will sit there and cause your stomach to bloat because it's not moving through the intestinal tract the way that it should. So uh, probiotics have an amazing way of altering the gut flora to decrease the amount of gas producing gut flora. It changes the nature of that entire tract. So when you pass gas, uh, uh, eruptation, it is not as foul, does the smell is unpleasant. When you burp and when you, when you breathe, your breath isn't as foul. Uh, your breath isn't foul at all, hopefully, uh, but it will help improve that tremendously because the bacteria, the bad bacteria that creates that bad gas and anaerobic and it changes the nature of the GI flora from bad bacteria to good bacteria. The good bacteria just isn't that foul. Uh, it, it's not, you know, something you'd like to smell like, but it's much better than the alternative. So I recommend those two products. Go to our website and, and read the section on GI health and things that, that we can do to help. Uh, flatten that tummy, stop bloating. Every symptom that you have listed there can be addressed by the, the combination of those two products. And guess what? That is a maintenance pro uh, program. You're going to be taking those to maintain good GI health. Uh, Dr. Kyers, three things that I recommend every day and that I take every day. Vitamin D, Dr. D at 5,000 international units per day. 
the probiotics uh, one in the morning, one in the evening, and omega three fish oil. So with the, I also take the colon cleanse to keep uh, again my stomach flat and to keep uh, my GI tract working, my bowels moving, without having to take a laxative and, and have diarrhea. So great question, Rana. The Barra Victor, how to get rid of hot flashes? The Barra hot flashes are, are a thing that I'm going to address actually on my next segment on Rick Smiley Morning Show because uh, this this problem is a real problem and most doctors just ignore it. Patients are screaming for help and relief and most doctors just say, oh, you'll get through it. You're just going through the change, all those sorts of things. There actually have been two medications released in the last six months to address specifically hot flashes. But the issue is always one of hormonal etiology, either too much of a hormone or too little of a hormone. And so if your hormonal status needs to be adjusted or balanced, what you need in the best treatment is an evaluation for bioidentical hormone replacement therapy or BHRT. These are pellets with hormones in them that restore what your body needs. So if you are lacking in certain hormones uh, and you are when you're having hot flashes, then it replaces them. You get a pellet today, your hormonal symptoms are improved by tomorrow. It is amazing. Uh, now, you may be required to stay on hormone therapy for an extended period of time. You may get it one time and the symptoms resolve and you never need it again. It just depends. But the primary therapy for this is bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. There are hormonal replacement therapies that are available that are pharmacological. Uh, everybody knows about uh, the, the hormone estrogen as Primarin. That's a brand name. Uh, then there's, if you have a uterus, you need progesterone to protect the lining of the uterus to stop it from overgrowing or predisposing you to uterine cancer. That hormone is called progesterone. There's a combination pill called Prim Pro that has Primarin and progesterone in it. Generic versions are available now. These are synthetic versions of those hormones that can and will give you some symptomatic relief. Uh, there are just some, you know, uh, health issues and concerns you have to be concerned about uh, before you start taking that therapy. So you have to be in partnership with either your primary care provider or your OBGYN to discuss uh, hormone replacement therapy for you. So great question to bear. C.L. Turner, what over counter medications that are recommended for the flu? Fortunately, uh, there are many medications that were prescription in the past that are all over the counter. First thing I'm recommending is chicken noodle soup. I will go to the uh, local chicken place uh, that serves, serves the world's greatest chicken sandwiches, get a, a large bowl of that chicken soup and divide it into multiple meals. I just eat a couple at a time when I have a respiratory tract infection. There's, uh, there are chemicals in chicken. Uh, that are very good for those type of symptoms. And so that's my first choice. I found that uh, people, patients, African-Americans in particular, love Theraflu. They take Theraflu like Robitussin. <laughs> and, uh, and it does have a variety of different things in it that can give you some great relief, particularly at night. I think that because you, you take it warm, it's like a tea that is soothing into itself. Uh, speaking of which, adding honey to it, uh, or any tea with honey in it. Honey is God's gift to bacterial infections. Honey is the only food product that does not spoil under any circumstances. Uh, you can have honey that's been sitting out for five years in your cabinet. It is still as fresh as the day you got it. It is actually used in the treatment of infectious diseases. It kills funguses, viruses, and bacteria. So in the good old days, they used to take honey and spread it on the open wound. And guess what? It prevented infection. They, they, we do that now. For people that have wounds that won't heal, we'll put honey on them. Uh, there are some uh, you know, honey-infused uh, dressings that can go on wounds as well. Now, <clears throat> non-sedating antihistamines, Allegra, C I mean, uh, not Cialis, Allegra, Zizol, uh, Zyrtec, and Claritin are all available over the counter, one pill, one time per day. That's for the sinus congestion and other uh, antihistamine types or histamine-reactive symptoms because it's an antihistamine for congestion. Uh, Mucinex DM, the DM is anti-cough. The Mucinex makes thick mucus, thin and watery, so you can hack it up, blow it out, get it out of your chest, get it out of your nose. When you have a respiratory tract infection, do not snort mucus, do not swallow mucus because if it gets into your GI tract, it will infect not only your nose and your chest 
it will now affect your GI tract. So you've gone from just having coughing and sneezing to coughing, sneezing, wheezing, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Now you are truly miserable. So do not have that, do not swallow that mucus, that uh, that thick yellow, thick green, nasty smelling stuff. Blow it out, hack it up, cough it out. Don't just hack it into the sink or on the floor. Hack it into some tissue. Put the tissue in a, a designated bag or area. Uh, load it up. The last time I had a respiratory tract, uh, my trash can uh, was loaded with tissue. Then I would seal that bag, throw it away. I wouldn't let anybody else handle it uh, until the next time uh, it was full again. Uh, but I would close it between uses. Don't let just an open bag of infected tissue uh, contaminate your room, your space, your area. Great question, CL. Feel better. Horace Buster Bridges. Can a diabetic take the lipo T alone with metformin and farcilia? Absolutely. The lipo T1 is a great indication because one of the biggest problems with diabetes is erectile dysfunction. The lipo T will help with that. There's no contraindication. It works wonderfully and has no contraindication with metformin or farcilia or the diabetes disease states, nor hypertension. There's no uh, stimulants in it that doesn't make your blood pressure go up. Uh, so it's a great product. If you have those disease states, the option is to take two pills or three pills daily. Uh, if you have both of those, you probably need to start off at least with the first uh, bottle, which is 90 tablets. You take three a day, anytime after dinner and before bedtime. And you will be glad that you did. And Mrs. Bridges will be glad that you did as well. And after you've done that, once you have improvement, you'll develop a certain level of sexual physical fitness. Then you can go down to two and that will last you for six weeks. The lipo T is available on our website, lipodrop.com. I think that there's still a special running on it. So you can get up to three bottles uh, for a markedly discounted price uh, for that. That is an amazing, amazing product. And this is the only place that you can get it. Okay, great question, Harsh. Rosemary, how is effective is CMOS? Do you have some more effective or better? Uh, I don't have a CMOS brand yet. I'm actually working on a lipo moss. Uh, product that will be available soon. Uh, CMOS is a very effective supplement. It helps with everything from cardiovascular disease to uh, it has uh, immune system boosting capabilities as well. Uh, CMOS, is, again, is uh, uh, not a secret to people that uh, know about herbs and know about supplements. It's been around for years and years and years, but we are just learning about it. I think that the Internet has helped tremendously bringing people into the know about it. But it's also a, a good product. There are various ones available where you get it and quality of product is very important. So I know that I see it advertised all the time online on the Internet. But I would go there are places like uh, Sam's, Costco's, uh, Walmart that have uh, brands inside their their store brand type. And so that kind of ensures you of, of a, a reasonable quality one. And, uh, you know, and so that's one of the things that I do recommend as well. Okay, great question, Rosemary. Dietrich Stokes, can I explain POTS disease? And also, do you know anyone who specializes in treatment of POTS disease in the Atlanta metro area? Uh, Deidre, you're going to get the uh, uh, stumping Dr. Collier uh, reward right here because I'm not quite sure what POTS disease is. I don't know anyone that specializes in it, but I will get the information as well. As a matter of fact, we'll see. If we can find anything about it right now uh, in real time. Let's see. Pots disease. Make sure that we are saying it correctly. Okay. Okay. Pots disease is spinal tuberculosis. Uh, it's the most common extra pulmonary manifestation of tuberculosis. So uh, I know uh, there are Doctors in Atlanta area specialize in the treatment of tuberculosis. Those doctors are called infectious disease specialists because it is particularly infecting the spine. It can cause uh, paralysis. Then you might need to have an orthopedist and possibly a neurologist as part of your treatment team. So uh, uh, there are places like uh, the Shepherd Spinal Center that might be able to give you a, a focus on that disease state proper. Uh, I have never seen a case of this in my clinical practice for the many years that I have practiced. Uh, but I'm reading about it right now, and it just says that it, is, it causes kyphosis, uh, paraplegia. That's a paralysis on one side or the other. Uh, and that's those are the major symptoms, other than just back pain because you have a bone that's infected with tuberculosis. Uh, so it's like almost 
metastatic disease because tuberculosis is a respiratory infection that usually affects the lungs. Uh, but if for whatever reason it spreads to the bones, uh, why it's focusing on the spine? I guess because it can be on the posterior uh, lung that's called a GON, G-H-O-N complex. And it's just kind of laying there. So maybe that's a good environment for it to do that. Uh, but uh, again, you treat the tuberculosis, eradicate that, and there are medications that can do that. But there may be other therapies as well. I can see a, a space for this for uh, infectious disease as well as possibly even radiation. Uh, so those are the things that we can do. Deidre, I'm going to see if I can get some more information about it, but that's what I was able to find just at a casual glance. And uh, again, that's literally the first time I've heard it referred to as that. I've heard it referred to as spinal tuberculosis, but not POTS. POTS sounds like a name of someone. And that is why they don't name disease states after people the way they used to. A doctor used to claim a disease, say, I discovered it and put his name on it for prosperity state. Uh, but then the next generation of people have no idea what it is. Uh, and so that's where this is right here. POTS disease for spinal tuberculosis is well within my lexicon. Uh, aware of the disease state. Never had a patient with it, knock on wood. Uh, but uh, again, uh, I am 100 percent sure that if you go to the Shepherd Spinal Center here in the city of Atlanta, that you can get more information about it. Great question. Jackal Jackal. From Columbia, good evening. My sister's had a cough since last year. She's been to several physicians. I had to give her prescription consists of steroids, antibiotics, and nasal spray, etc. The cough is so bad that she literally passes out and wakes up five to ten seconds later. Two weeks ago, she almost broke her nose, falling off the side of the bed. Oh, my goodness. That is a horrible circumstance. Uh, sometimes it is uh, not respiratory. Everybody's treating the most common things. And if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, then that's usually what it is. Uh, particularly if she got treated like that and got better for a period of time. She could be having a symptom of long COVID, uh, this chronic cough. Uh, and if she has had COVID, then I definitely would say that's probably what the situation is. And most of us have had it. Uh, then the, the problem with the cough is inflammation. How do you treat inflammation? With anti-inflammatories. So two natural anti-inflammatories that I would recommend regardless of the etiology because she has a bronchitis. Itis means inflammation of, inflammation of the bronchitis that are causing her to cough. So you treat the, the uh, inflammation with anti-inflammatories. That's basically what steroids are. Uh, antibiotics, some have uh, anti-inflammatory uh, possibilities as well. So you can get uh, the uh, vitamin D, the body's natural anti-inflammatory, 5,000 international units per day. Omega-3 fish oil is also very well. It's a few things in our immunopack. Uh, that uh, would help as well. The life for immune, which has zinc, uh, vitamin C, and uh, elderberry extract, all good supplements that have been shown to help with inflammatory conditions. So all of those are things you can do. It's not gonna, you're not gonna take it today and be cured tomorrow. You may have to take it for weeks, possibly months, but the problem is inflammation. You treat and cure the inflammation. I would also recommend two tests that she may or may not have had. A, comp a CBC, a complete blood count to check the status of the white blood cell to see if she does have an infection or if infection is out of control. She obviously has infection. The question is, is it out of control? Uh, a test called erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is a test for inflammation, and a test called the HS high sensitivity C-reactive protein, another inflammatory marker. Those three things will lead doctors down the correct path, hopefully. There's also the possibility that it has nothing to do with infection or inflammation, that it's just heart related and that we need to have a, a, a comprehensive evaluation by a cardiologist to make sure that she's not having issues with the heart. It can be asthma. The primary symptom of asthma is coughing, not wheezing. So it can actually be uh, reactive lungs, reactive airways uh, that can be causing this as well. And so she needs an evaluation by it. Once we try the anti-inflammatory, that's a low-hanging fruit. You can do that. That require a doctor's visit. You can then go to my next uh, choice would be a pulmonologist to evaluate uh, lung functioning, do pulmonary function testing on your sister to make sure she does not have asthma or reactive airways. And then, of course, after that, cardiology. But there is an answer. You just have to look for it. But don't go in and predispose the doctors to one thing or the other. Tell them that the symptom is coughing and that she coughs so much that she passes out. Then let them look. If you go in saying uh, that she's been treated with this, that, and the other, 
they're going to start going down that pathway, and that is the wrong pathway, obviously, in this circumstance. So they're going to have to think outside the box and think with an open mind for and consider possibilities that have not been considered up to this point. Okay, great question. Okay, just want to make a statement now. If you look at the scrolling banner, Lipo Nice, 25% off tonight. The Lipo T3 pack, 31% off. The Ketomac capsule is now back in stock. One of our most popular products because they give your body a state of ketosis and make you lose weight just as if you were on the Atkins or the South Beach diet. It metabolizes fat. It focuses on fat loss. A uh, question earlier, losing weight over age 40. Keto Max is a great way to do that in addition to our Lipo Drops Max and now our Lipo Night product, which makes you lose weight in, in a different way at night while you are sleeping. So great specials going on with each one of those. Go to the website right now, lipodrops.com. You can split your screen and do it or go immediately afterwards because these prices will not be available long after the show is concluded. So we want to make sure that you have done that. That's one of the things when you join the family, you'll be eligible for extended periods on the discounts as well. So join the family. Uh, and it tells you how to do that. Various ways, virtually every page on the website tells you how to become a member of the Lipo Cares family. So go to lipodrops.com right here, right now. And also tell all your friends to tune in to our Facebook Live and Instagram Live broadcast. This is a great way for people to get health information at absolutely no cost. Everybody can ask those questions. For everybody to ask that question, there's a million people in the audience that have the same question. You just got answered on their behalf. So why? Because lipo cares and your health is important. Okay, back to the next question. What helps vertigo and dizziness go away? Prayer and tithing on, on gross, not debt. Boy, Gilda, that is a great question. Uh, oftentimes, vertigo and dizziness are caused by the plumbing in the in the ear section. That's where behind the eardrum, you station tube, which has fluid in there, the purpose of which is to lubricate the three bones of hearing, the incus, the malleus, and the stapes. There's a closed system just like the oil in a car's engine. If that fluid, if the plumbing gets plugged at some point, you get congestion and that fluid isn't draining down the back of your throat, which is the way that it should happen. It coats the bones, goes down your throat. You're never aware of any of this. It goes to your stomach and it's digested. It backs up. It puts back pressure on the ear. You get vertigo. It goes from the middle ear to the inner ear. The inner ear is your balance system. And there are, are, are Bony structures in the ear, one's going 90 degrees up, one's horizontal, one's at 45 degrees. Those allow you to feel not just to, to stay oriented. So you can close your eyes and you know that you're standing up. You can close your eyes and know that your head is going to the left or the right. So that is a, that's a proprioceptive neurological function that allows you to do that. So, But when you get vertigo, that's discombobulated. Your body doesn't know what direction it's in. And so you can either feel like you are spinning and the room is still or that the room is spinning and you are still. Either way, it's very unpleasant and uh, it makes it difficult. Uh, I, I have a patient right now suffering. And she, when she walks, it's like she's leaning to one side or the other. She's listing because her body doesn't have the orientation, doesn't feel like it's standing up. So it's trying to correct her. Uh, and she, you know, she, she has to fight it to stop from falling, basically. Uh, but the dizziness can be a problem. Uh, it can also be associated with nausea and also ringing in the ear, tinnitus. So all of those things can be. So oftentimes the problem is you station to dysfunction. Primary initial therapies would be a decongestive mucolytic like the Muscanex DM. Now available over the counter, now available at full strength. Maximum strength is a dose of 600 milligrams slash 1200 milligrams. You take one in the morning, one in the evening. And a non-sedating antihistamine like the Zyrtec, the Allegra, the Zyzol, or the uh, Claritin, or the Ratadine. Everybody has one of those that they swear by. I, I can state without question, the Zyzol is the most potent and non-sedating antihistamine that exists. Allegra is also non-sedating. Some people are sedated by the Zyrtec, even though it is non-sedating. Technically, it's a side effect of that particular medication. In some people, it can make you sleepy. Uh, but the vast majority of people have no problems with it whatsoever. So those two things, and then a nasal spray, uh, flow nasal, nasal cord, to open up the plumbing. I know it makes no sense to spray something up in your nose to clear your ear, but in the center of your head, those pathways are connected. Uh, you may be unaware of that. 
But if you go straight back, like you're taking a COVID swab, you, you could take a Q-tip and go straight back and then go through your ear and they would meet in the middle and form an L and that's where the plumbing, uh, that's a, a juncture in the plumbing that those two systems are connected. So a nasal spray opens up that area and allows that fluid to drain and decompresses that area. So a non-sedating antihistamine, a mucolytic, like the Mucinex DM, and uh, there are very low doses of that are available that are a total waste of money, or you got to take two tablets every four hours, and who wants to do that? Well, you can take one tablet twice daily to get totally complete symptomatic relief, and the nasal spray, which you can use once or twice daily. Uh, it's two puffs in each nostril. You spray one side, you spray the other side. You come back, take a few breaths, you spray one side, you spray the other side. If you go on one side, it'll all run back out of your nose because it takes about five seconds for the mist to bind to the lining of the sinuses. And if you spray too large amount in there, it's going to run back out. You're going to blow your nose and you've wasted the medicine. So spray one side, spray the other side, breathe a couple of times, spray one side, spray the other side. The other thing is you do not tilt your head back. You, you tilt your head forward and arch your head. You look at your toes and spray your nose. Look at your toes and spray your nose. So three things that can help with that, Gilda. Let us know next week how you, you benefited from that. But you need to do that probably for at least two weeks. And you may have to continue to do it for maintenance therapy because you want to have an extended period of normality so that plumbing can right itself. And then uh, you have normal drainage again and you won't get the vertigo again. The vertigo is and can be a curse. Great question. Okay, Ellen Upshaw, I have neuropathy in my left foot and the meds I was given makes me gain weight. What can I use to suppress my appetite? Uh, one, make a conscious decision to eat less because uh, very few medications actually make you uh, increase your appetite. They may make you gain weight or potentiate weight gain. There's no calories in those pills, but what they can do is potentiate weight gain, which means you got to be monitoring what you're eating. But they don't make you, you know, crave certain foods or anything like that. But you also, there are a couple of medications that are available. Uh, the most common uh, is Neurontin or Gabapentin, uh, which uh, I've been told that can be a side effect of. But a newer version of that, a, a, a better version, a more focused version, is called Lyrica. Uh, Lyrica uh, is... is um, a lower dose for a shorter period of time, and that may give you a, a major benefit from neuropathy. Neuropathic pain is a nerve that is uh, overreacting. And so what that medication and those medications like it do are block pathways in that nerve. They're not pain medications. They're not addicting. They don't make you high or happy, but you do have to be at a therapeutic dose. And most of the time, they would work, but you start off on such a low dose, particularly with the neurontin, because it can be sedating in some people. And so they say, well, it makes me sleepy. So the idea of going up on the dose is beyond comprehension. But the thing is that you will develop a tolerance to it, and it won't make you sleepy anymore. And you have to get a, a starting dose may be 100 milligrams two or three times per day. Maximum dose may be 600 milligrams uh, or two of those, 1,200 milligrams three times per day. So you have to tighten it up. But once you get to that level, that works. It is literally like a light switch. It just cuts the, the pain off and just you just don't have it anymore. So amazing class of drugs. They work wonderfully, uh, particularly if the, the neuropathy is due to the diabetes, but it doesn't have to be. They, they work uh, for virtually any type of neuropathic pain. Okay, Heidi, we're going to close it out right here. That was our final question. This will be, okay, I'll go with Neva's question. I'm 35 about to start my high blood pressure medicine. I heard you stated that uh, blood pressure medicine would not cause ED. I was wondering what they are again. If you can repeat that, great. I'm so glad I got to this question. Uh, one, the class of drugs called ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. They work by blocking a hormone that's secreted by your kidneys that makes your blood pressure go up under stress. If that hormone is not present, you are not stressed. Uh, the medicine literally doesn't do anything, so it has zero side effects. So from that perspective, uh, it does not impact your ability to get or maintain an erection. It probably will enhance it because high blood pressure takes away from your ability to have a, a good front erection. If you lower the blood pressure, the medicine is a targeting there, and so now you should get better erections. Another class of drugs called the calcium channel blockers actually enhance erectile function because the mechanism of erection is one of the blood flow. So if you have a pipe that's this big, and you take a, a vasodilator 
and it makes the pipe this big, you get more blood flow. And so as blood flows in the penis, you get more blood directly into the penis, ergo longer and harder erections. Nobody ever complains about that. And nobody says, Dr. Kaya, take me off this medicine because it makes my erections too long and too hard. But there are just as the opposite, there are classes of drugs that will definitely have a negative impact on your erection. That is higher dose diuretics. I, I don't exceed a diuretic dose of 12.5 milligrams of hydrochlorothiazide because at 25 and 50 can cause erectile dysfunction and uh, beta blocker class drugs as well. There are others. But the ones that I just mentioned, they are the best class of drugs to treat high blood pressure, particularly in men and particularly in men of African-American status. So great final question. We'll close it out with that. Thank you, Hyalic, for an amazing evening. I'm glad I didn't cough too much on anybody. Uh, did have to drink water a few times. So thank you for understanding. Uh, again, it's been a long day for Dr. Collier, and he's trying to get through it. So thank you, thank you, thank you for participating. We'll see you next time.